this is, uh, I'm continuing today along the lines of the series that I have been sharing. And this is number five in the series. And we are talking about living in Christ and having Christ live in us. And uh, we are uh, likening it to and calling it, being in Christ, the sphere of the believer. And I was sharing that with someone today. I said, it's like a transparent shell, just like this uh, goblet globe that I have used as an illustration. It's like you're either in Christ or you're out of Christ. If you're not in Christ, you're in Adam. And in Adam, all die. But in Christ, all live. Hallelujah. And uh, it speaks of the environment in which the believer lives. You know, we're different from everybody else on the face of the earth. We have been reconnected to our creator. Spirit and body, we're reconnected. And uh, this sphere, being in Christ, this transparent uh, uh, body that we're members of, it surrounds us. It's above us, below us, before us, and behind us. We are just complete in Him. In Him. And now, uh, it very simply put is being in Christ Jesus. We're every believer. Amen. And not only being in Christ, but then the follow up to that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And uh, in Acts 17 and 28, just give you a little bit of uh, background. Acts 17 and 28, for in him we live, we move, and we have our being. We exist. It's all living in Jesus. And uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, it says, how do I get in there? By one spirit, are we all baptized, immersed, placed into one body? Whether we're Jews, Gentiles, that means a non-Jew, whether we're bond or free, we've all been made to drink into one spirit. And now there's many members, but there's only one body. And I love the verse that says, he sets every member in the body as it pleases him. You know, it doesn't please everybody to have women preachers, but it pleases him. I had someone ask me when I first was starting out as a youth leader and I'd uh, spoken and they came on Friday night. I'd spoken that night and I looked up and there were two, three young men coming down the aisle toward me and, and I knew where they, they were from the uh, Baptist seminary that was there in Corpus Christi, Texas where I grew up and they came down the aisle and the question out of their mouth, number one, they said, you have uh, no right to be preaching as a woman and uh, then they said, by what authority do you preach? And it just got, I, I just said, Lord, let me be nice. I, I didn't know. I didn't. And it just kept, I said, I'm anointed. And you know what? That's always been the best answer. Amen. God puts us in the body as it pleases everybody else. No. <laughs> A lot of people won't like you if God uses you. Did you know that? As it pleases him. And in him, there's neither male nor female, bond or free, Jew or Greek. We're all one in him. So racism ends at, at the doorway of the body of Christ. Racism ends. We're all one in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, what the scripture that got me started in this study that I've been doing, and it's just been amazing uh, to me. I, it's like the New Testament. It's like I got hold of a, a handful of keys. In fact, I mentioned this to you when I first started. I had a dream, but the dream disturbed me so much. The next night, I didn't want to go in the bedroom and go to sleep because that dream had been so real. And for some reason, it, 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 it scared me. It disturbed me. I don't know why. I just, have you ever woke up out of a dream startled and trouble and, and I couldn't get it out of my mind and in the dream I had gone I was with my daughter and someone else and I had gone into a large auditorium somewhere and I was going to be one of the speakers but we were there early and we'd sat down and they were working on the platform getting stuff ready and and I looked at my watch and I thought well I've got about an hour and a half before I have to be down here to speak I think I'll just go up uh, and get the key to my room and uh, I'll just go rest and so I went out and I went uh, to someone who was in charge in the back and I said, I would like the key to my room. And the man looked at me and he laughed. He reached down and he came up with a glob of keys and just put them in my hand. And 
he thought it was funny. I didn't think it was funny at all. I only wanted the key to my room. And it was, and I, what he gave me and what I realized I had was the key to every hotel room in that complex. He gave me a key to every room. And I thought, I didn't want everybody else's key. I want to go rest. And I realized later on, think about that dream. I really wasn't wanting to help everybody else. I just wanted something that would help me. <laughs> I just wanted to rest. And I was so distressed. I went upstairs to find somebody else. And I said, do you know that man down there gave me a key to every room in this place? And the man just looked at me, kind of smiled. And I, but, and I woke up so disturbed and distressed. And then later I had someone tell me, he said, uh, well, he laughed at you. And that means he, it was favor he was giving you. And he put in your hand keys. Well, when I began studying about being in Christ, one uh, writer from the 1800s uh, talked about that uh, the uh, teaching of being in Christ, it was the key to the whole New Testament. So I find every time I open up the New Testament and start reading, I find a thread. Of, uh, it's like I have the key to every book. It's like I have the key to every scripture I'm looking at. I'm not, I'm just telling you, it just stuns me. Things that never made sense suddenly make sense. They just connect and open up. But the main scripture that got me started even thinking along these lines is a scripture I pondered. I've pondered over it many, many times. I never got it. And it's Romans 8 and 2. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, and that means he did, make me free from the law of sin and death. I would read that. I love the book of Romans. And basically, all of this uh, series that I've been sharing with you, basically, we have been in the book of Romans. We'll go from Romans to Corinthians and on to the other Pauline epistles. But basically, we have studied out of the book of Romans. And uh, I, I would read this scripture and I would try, you know, that all of the uh, punctuation marks were put in by translators. So the commas may not always be where the translator put them. I remember Brother David Shock one time talking about the scripture. When the enemy, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lift up a standard. He said, you know, we don't know if that's where the comma was or not. He said, I kind of believe it's when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lift up a standard. I thought, I, I like moving that comma. I like that. <laughs> so the law of the spirit, this is where I put my the law of the spirit, comma of life in Christ Jesus, comma, has or did make me free from the law of sin and death. There's a law in Christ, a law, not just a suggestion, not a thought, not something you've just uh, got to vainly try to grasp, a law of life. And that word life there, the Greek word is Zoe. It is God life, God's nature, eternal life, resurrection life. The kind of life that when you get a touch from the Lord, whoo, you get quickened, that kind of life. When you get healed, that kind of life. Because every healing has taken dominion over any death working in your body. That's what healing is. It's life instead of death. So, uh, Free, it made us free from the law of sin and death. What does free mean? Free from slavery, bondage, sickness, disease, disaster, poverty, Satan's hold on any area of your life and it, it makes you free from the influence of the enemy. So Galatians 3 and 27, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. That word baptized means to be dipped, immersed, into Christ, and I like this, have put on Christ. So all these, this is, I didn't have any beans, so I use rice to be my little people. So all of these little people, when they were put into Christ, they were put, baptized by one spirit into one body, and then they not only were in the body, but they put on Christ. And you know, one of the definitions for the name Christ is anointed. So when you're in Christ, you can put on the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Now, Romans 6 and 4. Therefore, therefore, because of all of this, we are, say are, that means we are buried with him by baptism. 
That, wa that water baptism, that time, if you have never been baptized in water, that could possibly be a chink in your armor. It could possibly be the fly in the ointment for you because he told us that water baptism is symbolic of when you bury the old man. In the early church, they believed before they were baptized in water, to tell you the truth, we do exorcism on people after they've been saved 30 years. They did exorcism on people when they came to the altar. You didn't get baptism, you didn't get Holy Ghost, you didn't get nothing until you got the devils cast out. Amen, Sister Ann. Amen, I like that kind of teaching. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Therefore, we are buried with him. And that means we were in him when he was buried. He went to the cross. And when he was buried, we were in him. By baptism, when we're baptized, into death. We're baptized in water. We're being baptized into his death. That like or just like Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. I've thought about this a lot. I've been studying that word glory has different applications, but I've just about come to the conclusion that most places that I'm seeing this word glory, it means the outshining presence of God in that person. So just like Christ was raised, can you even imagine the glory, the outshining presence that happened in that tomb when the stone whoo, was rolled away? Can you imagine the explosion of light and life and glory that happened in that tomb? It's, we're buried with him in the death just like he was buried in that tomb. That as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk, and that word walk, it always means live your life, in newness or in a new kind of life. And this word life is Zoe. That means in God life. If you're in Christ, you have God life. The other Greek word for Life, it could apply to anyone, even if you're in here, it still could apply to you, is Zao, Z A O. And it, it simply means to be among the living. But Zoe means you have received God's nature into your life. And I want to add, and into your physical body. I want to mention right here that when Adam sinned in the garden, he not only cut himself off from spiritual sustenance from God the Father. He also was cut off from physical substance from the Father. Physically, he died spiritually or he was cut off from God spiritually. He became dead spiritually, but physically he lost his connection. And I have pondered that verse in Matthew 4 and 4, and it began to make sense to me more than ever. Man shall not or does not or cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. You and I that know Jesus, we don't live just by the hot tamales and the tacos and, and the french fries. We don't live by that alone. We might get fat on it, but we ain't living by it. <laughs> it's not real life. We know real life. It's that life when you hear a word from God. Whoa, when Lazarus heard, Lazarus, come forth. He didn't need no T-bone steak. He didn't need any, any, any uh, rolls and mashed potatoes and gravy and uh, mac. He didn't need that. All he needed for life to come in his physical body was to hear the voice of God. And that's what you and I need to quicken our mortal body. I live, but I live not only by a, a natural life and, and, and by like everything that's lived, but I live by another source of life that when I came to Jesus, I was reconnected 
to the Father spiritually. But I want to go further and say to you that when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, he paid it all. He paid the price. His blood was shed to remove every cause of sin, sickness, disease, and death from you. He bought you spirit and body. That's why Paul says, therefore glorify or honor God in your spirit and in your body, which are his. You say, why didn't it say soul? Because that soul is you. That's where you make your choices, your decisions. And that, that's, that's you. That's your personality. That's just who you are. So, and you make the choice of following the Lord and belonging to him. All right. So when we rise out of the waters of baptism, we rise to walk in a new kind of life. Every one of us here that didn't know Jesus, and I, I would say if you have not yet had the opportunity, some people aren't baptized in water, they never had the opportunity. But I want to say you've got that opportunity this morning. And at the end of the service, we'll be having uh, communion, but we will also be doing water baptism for anyone here that has never been baptized in water. You're walking around carrying a corpse on your back. You need to bury him. You know, I thought you carry a corpse around long enough, it stinks. And you know, sometimes if we haven't buried the old man, he stinks. He starts infecting and influencing and we get the odor. Moving right along. Hallelujah. I tell you, I am excited about this word today. I want to share, this was just a new flavor that God put in my heart early this morning. Ephesians 4 and 8. He said when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Now this is talking about when Jesus was resurrected. He, first of all, he went down before he came up and we'll get to that. But he led captivity captive. The righteous that had died believing the Messiah was coming, they were being held in paradise below. But when he went down the three days and three nights, he went down to paradise below and he preached unto them. And that would mean Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Adam, Eve, amen, Rebecca, right on up, right on up. Uh, Help me, Jeremiah, Matthew, right up till they were born. They were all under the law and he led those who had been held captive. They weren't in hell. They weren't in Hades. They were just in paradise below, the place for the dead that would be raised. They died in faith, believing. And he led them captive. That means when he ascended, he took all those folks with him to paradise. He said to them, Remember when he said to the thief on the cross, he said, you know, uh, remember me. And Jesus said, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Okay, now the ninth verse, now he that ascended, here it is, but what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended into the lower parts of the earth is also the same that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Remember that, fill all things. And he gave from that position, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pa evangelists, we're gonna have Evangelist Robin coming back soon, and some pastors and teachers. When brother John and sister Robin went, I said, John, be sure you get me an itinerary while you're over there. I was joking him. So he called me. He said, well, I've got some meetings for you in China. <laughs> he said, I met a man that has a church, but also he can connect with the underground church. He said, I told him you'd come. I said, you're right. I will go. <laughs> All right. So he gave pastors and teachers. Now listen, this gets so good. For the perfecting. That word perfecting means the maturing of the saints. Some saints don't want to mature. I told him, I said, you better start, I just this way, you better start getting that pacifier out of Asia's mouth. And I mean, he said, why? I said, you, you're going to ruin her teeth. Well, I don't know about that, but every picture I see, mm -hmm. I said, get that pacifier out of her mouth. And you know something? Some of you aren't ready to give up your pacifier either. Come on. 
We like what comforts our flesh. Okay, now, he, for the, he gave these gifts for the, the perfecting, maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for those that work in ministry, for them to do the ministry of, of the, in the body of Christ, and for the edifying. That word edifying means maturing and building up of the church, which is the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, the body of Christ is the church, which is his body. So he gave all this apostles, prophets, for the building up, the edifying, and the maturing. You know, if I, and I should do this, if I put on a pot of water, boiling, and put as much rice as I've got in here, honey, I'd fill this thing up in a half an hour. You know what I'm saying? One time when we were first married, I didn't know you could warm up rice. I wasn't a cook. And so Brother John had invited all the young people to come over. We're living in Cattersport. And so I thought, I'm going to cook rice. And then I'll cook a little chili. We'll put on the rice. And I'll tell him that's his supper. So I cook. But he didn't come home when he was supposed to. And I'm looking. The rice is hot. And, and it's, it, he didn't come home. And it got cold. It's getting cold. And I thought, to keep that rice warm, I'm going to pour all this chili on there on it. And so, and I put the lid on it. I had one of those big, you know, cook, put the lid on it. When he came in a little bit later, he said, oh, it smells good. What and it was up until he said, what is it? I said, I don't know, but let's eat it before it gets any bigger. <laughs> eat it now. <laughs> but the maturing, this is for the maturing of the saints and the building up, edifying of the body of Christ. So everybody that's in the body of Christ, this rice isn't mature yet. But wait till you put it in some water. You know, water speaks of the word. And then wait till you put some heat under it. Honey, you'll mature that rice. You'll mature, you'll have enough for everybody. All right, verse 13, till we all come. Listen, what he did at Calvary was to bring us all till we come, arrive in the unity of the faith. Listen how I say this to you. Of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. I read this a few years ago. I was reading this. And the Lord just, well, he said, do you understand what you read? And I said, no, I don't. He said, read again. And I read, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Do you know what you read? No, not really. Read it. I read it about five times. And then I said, well, Lord, it seems like there's too many ofs in there for me to think it means about. It doesn't say till we all come in the unity about the faith or about the knowledge or about the Son of God. It implies to we come in the unity, the harmony, the flowing together of the faith and of the knowledge of that he had, the Son of God. And I thought, that's really possible if you're in Christ. You will come to the maturity and attain to the faith and the knowledge. How would you like to have the knowledge the Son of God had? How would you like to have the, operate in the faith that he had? I'm gonna tell you what kind of faith he had he said, I don't do anything if I don't hear it from the Father or if I don't see him do it first. He didn't call hope faith. He didn't call claiming it and naming it faith. He called faith if I can hear it or God shows it to me, I have the ability to believe it and do it. Faith comes through the tunnel of hearing a rhema word, not hearing somebody else, not saying, well, if he can do it, I can do it, she can do it. That's not faith. That's presumption. How would you like to have the faith of the Son of God? It means he was hearing. He said, Father, I thank you. You always hear me. And I have to believe he always heard God too. Unto the faith of and the knowledge of the Son of God. So if you come to the faith and the knowledge that he had, it said, you would come be a perfect man. Now, what's God after? If we're baptized and we're in one body, what's he after? The word perfect means finished, complete, lacking nothing, full grown and mature. Unto the measure, the required quantity of the stature the adult age, the height and comeliness of the fullness. Fullness is that which has been filled up 
with the presence, power, riches of God and of Christ. The completeness of Christ. Am I saying it too fast? Fullness. He wants this body, this transparent sphere of the body of Christ. He wants it to be filled up. And I said, I could get it filled up. I took it home and cooked it. I should do that and bring it back. <laughs> I won't do that, but not today. But he wants the body of Christ full, mature, full grown, complete in what it was purposed for, positioned for, and what he requires of it. So we're ready to go right now, but we're not mature. We're not growing up, but we are. Now it said, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness. The fullness, it says in the New Testament, speaking of the body, it means the presence, the power, the riches of God, and the completeness of Christ filled up. Now Ephesians 1 and 17, Paul said, I pray that the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's not the knowledge about him. Of means from. It's like I would introduce somebody and I'd say, this is uh, Pastor John Jimenez. He's from Korea. I mean of Korea. This is Pastor Ann Jimenez. She's of Texas. I'm from there. And that's what this of means. He may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge from him. The eyes of your understanding being illuminated, being enlightened, that you may know, this is what we want to know, the hope of his calling. You know what his calling is? To be the head of the church, which is his body. And the head of a man is not going to sit on the body of a child. Be a freak. He's waiting on us. We're not waiting on him. He said, grow up in him, in all things. Said, what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of or from his inheritance in the saints? What is his inheritance in you? Well, the Bible teaches us that we have a down payment on our inheritance. Our inheritance is eternal life, but we have received a down payment. We have received a, what else do you call it? If you've got to earnest, that's it. The earnest of our inheritance we have received. And it says the earnest of our inheritance of eternal life caught up is the Holy Spirit. We have, woohoo! We have received the down payment on eternal life, and it is the Holy Spirit that has come in us. And when the Holy Spirit has come in you, He will also quicken, make alive your mortal body. I don't buy this stuff that we just got to die and be sick and, and one day we'll go to heaven. No, he paid it all at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. He paid it all. He bought me spirit and body. I am bought with a price. Now, what and know what is the exceeding? He wants you to know the exceeding greatness of his power. Now, this word power is dunamis. That's the dynamite power. To us who believe, according to the working or operating, listen, of his mighty power. It's a different kind of power. The working of his mighty power. Mighty means the ability. And this word power is K-A-R-A-T-S, karat, sir. But it means force, strength, and dominion. He wants us to know the exceeding greatness of his dynamite power that blasted open that door and blasted open the grave you were in in sin, in sin and, and, and dying and away from God. Amen. But he wants you to know the mighty ability of force and strength and dominion in your life. Some people can never get victory over some things. I want you to know victory over all things is found in Christ and being filled with his spirit. They, nothing can stand or withstand the force, the mighty force of God himself, which he wrought, which he operated and displayed 
in Christ. He did it in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has, and when it says he has, it means he did put all things, say with me, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head. It didn't say he's the feet. It said he's the head gave him to be the head over all things to the church. If he put all things under the feet, that means the part of the body that is touching the earth. What part of the body of Christ is on earth today? It's you and it's me. It's every born again believer. Hallelujah. He's the head of the church. That's his calling. And we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. He put all things, he did put it under his feet. Now, the 23rd verse, and I'll be done, which is, he's the head of all things to the church, which is his body. In Christ, this is the body of Christ. This is symbolic of it. I'm using it simply as visual sight to capture your mind, to grasp this wonderful truth that we've been translated out of darkness. That means picked up, lifted up, and we have been carried into the kingdom of God's dear son. We're set in the body as it pleases him. His body, he's the fullness or the completeness of him. Now listen to this. His body put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head of the church, his body. He's the fullness, the completeness of him that filleth, that word filleth means makes full to the brim and completes all. That means individually and collectively, he completes us and fulfills us all. Then it says in all. And that word in is the same word. We're in Christ and it means all. He is in us. He is in every member and he makes him complete and full as every member and the more members come and fill up the body of Christ and make it full and complete. He is in us making us full and complete in him for the glory of God. No wonder, says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises in judgment, it shall fall. Greater, greater is he that's in me, larger, bigger, Better is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Can you say amen? amen? Woo! Let's stand up this morning. What a mighty God I serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty, mighty God. We now, we'll stand for just a moment and then we're going to receive communion. They asked me, they said, do you want communion this Sunday morning? We're supposed to. I said, absolutely. Without Calvary, none of this works. Without that he died on the cross for you and me, and without that he shed his blood, there's no way to be in Christ. And in Christ are all the benefits, all the strength, all the wisdom, all the understanding, all the compassion, everything that we gain and have in Christ, none of it would be efficacious in any way if it wasn't for Calvary and for that shed blood. And as we prepare our hearts to receive communion today, I loved it when the Lord showed me one Sunday afternoon. So we usually live right down here on Stratford Chase. And one Sunday afternoon, I was supposed to preach that night. And I was studying, I was studying. We're supposed to have communion. I'm studying. And I looked up the word bread. To my utter amazement, I found there's not one place in the New Testament, not one, where bread is mentioned, that it means matzah or cracker. Every place bread is mentioned where he says, I'm the bread of life. When he took the bread and broke it, every place it says bread, it means loaf bread. And it was the common man's bread. It was bread everybody could have. There's some you know, king's bread that everybody did have. But this kind of barley bread, everybody could have it. And I started hollering, John, John. I said, call the deacons. We don't tell them don't buy any crackers for tonight. We've got to have loaf bread. 
We've got to have whoo, risen bread. He said, came and said, why? I used to tell him, when I tell you something, don't ask me why, just do it. Well, it, that never did work, but anyway. <laughs> I said, because, you know why this is important to you and me today? Why this is a celebration of life? Because this bread that I'm holding is loaf bread. What do you mean loaf bread? I mean there is a component in this bread that made it rise. It's not dead bread. It's not flat bread. It's not that it will never rise. It has something in it that caused it to rise. You see, well, I thought that leaven was like sin. Well, it just, he, he used that to, as a picture. But he also said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Meaning he was using it as a metaphor. He wanted to show that when the kingdom of heaven is preached, it will has life in it and it will, it will affect everything around it. So leaven doesn't just speak of sin. If there's sin, I tell you, if you've got a rotten apple in the barrel, it will affect every other apple in there. And strawberries too, I found out this morning. <laughs> yeah, every one of them, great big one. I threw them all away, had to. But in this bread, say in this bread, there's a component that made it rise. And then Paul said, and if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will also quicken, make alive your mortal body by his spirit that lives in you. So if you're in Christ and he is in you, he will make alive with healing, strength, vitality. As long as he wants you here, he'll make you alive. No foe can harm you. No one alarm you. Amen. He is our life. He is our life. And we have that same spirit in our hearts and in our lives. Folks, Calvary paid it all. When we take communion, I was so thrilled to take communion. In fact, I'd started to, the last two or three times I preached, I started to say, can't we get communion ready? Can't we have communion ready? Because it's all about this. It's all about the broken body. The price has been paid. We've been lifted, translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. We used to sing, he set me free, he set me free. He broke the chains of the bondage of sin, break the chains of sin for me. And there's another, once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from the sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, he set me. How many of you are set free this morning? Do you know what the Bible says? As often as you do this, as often, and he didn't say once a day or once a month or once. He said, it's just often. I want you to, you do show my death till I come. That word show means celebrate, demonstrate, and preach my death. Why would you be preaching his death? Because he paid it all. Because that death made you debtless. He paid a debt he didn't owe. And I owed a debt I couldn't pay. So I'm celebrating his broken body and this wine speaks of the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin, no taking it away. And oh, this is what a great day this is. He paid it all. He paid it all. I'm free, I'm free, I'm set free. Hallelujah. He paid it all for me and for you. So this is our celebration today. We're celebrating not only that he went to the cross, that he was buried, which took away condemnation. He was raised, which means he raised us out of death.